Hello everyone, welcome to Whole Lot Chaos, a podcast where I talk about movies, shows, games, books, what have you, as chaos commences. I'm your host, Chaos Beetle Frontiers, and as the mysterious Mr. Enner would say, we have a very special episode, <laughs> starring my good That's friend, true. Plebis on the hit... Plebis on the hit website, Serialized. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am uh, Plebis. Uh, Chaos over here will be referring to me as uh, Brian, most likely, throughout this. That's where I uh, go go by most uh, yeah. online. But, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. here. We're going to talk about a couple things. Uh, yeah, Brian yeah. from the hit show Bob's Burgers. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah. Iconic. So, um... So, I guess we started this episode off a little bit golden. Do you know what else is golden, Brian? Uh, what is golden? I, I don't know. Uh, the Simpsons Season 1. The ooh, most nice. memorable season of television ever. Nice. So memorable, in fact, that I had to that I had to pull up a list of Season 1 episodes just so I could remember the names of them off of Wikipedia. Yeah. You know, I could probably, like, name most of them, but that's just because I've, like... Uh, for a warning, uh, I'm, like, big on classic Simpsons, so that's partially why I requested, uh, doing this. Uh, this is probably, yeah. in preparing for this, this is probably my, uh, third time I've watched this season in full. Uh, it's not that good of a season, but I am definitely familiar with it, so I guess we'll, Yeah, uh, I was, yeah, I was gonna say, I think, I think that the first season of Simpsons is, like, fine, but it's kind of it's kind of like having the Transformers G one effect on me, where it's not really getting me to you know binge a lot consistently, which I'm hoping the later seasons will soon rectify. Yeah, I, I mean Transformers G one already got me reeled in with season two and its awesome theme song. So Three. who knows what Simpsons can pull off? Uh, who knows uh, what they can pull off? Just a forewarning: uh, season two is already like an immediately. Uh, jump in quality compared to season one i'd say well obviously in like the grand scheme of simpsons 30 plus seasons this is probably one of the better seasons but like if we're talking classic simpsons i'd say uh this is the weakest out of the the first eight uh I, a lot yeah. of people uh, a lot of people say this but the main thing i like about it it's thing is if it was on its own i don't think i'd like it that much i just find it interesting a lot from a historical perspective because like, you look at this and like it's so different from yeah, everything for sure. else like that yeah i i completely agree with you i said on serial i said on serialized this is one of the most dated seasons of television that i have ever seen and i honestly wouldn't have it any other way since it's like a very interesting time capsule yeah. A time capsule, which I only really find the three of the episodes all that memorable. Uh, I think, okay, there's, uh, three in this batch I think I really like. I, uh, I love the pilot, obviously. It's, like, a really Oh, yeah, great... Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire is the best of the bunch. Uh, yeah, definitely. Doubt. It just works really, really well as a pilot, uh, which it wasn't even supposed to be. As like a lot of Simpsons fans know, that was supposed to be some enchanted evening, which was literally so fucked animation wise. It had to be the last of the season. But uh, yeah. yeah, then you have, yeah. uh, and then the other two, I like. I really like Krusty gets busted a lot. I like. Psych yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's my second favorite yeah. of the episodes. And uh, yeah. I really like. It's like, uh, well, yeah, keep going. Yeah, yeah, it's like Krusty gets busted has a lot of the humor that I would expect from a uh, modern I would expect from like the bear seasons of Simpsons and uh, would you look at that a uh, Brad Bird directed Oh it. yeah yeah uh he sticks around yeah. for I think at least until like season 3 or something he was weirdly a big But yeah it's like yeah but yeah like the part where Cr where Krusty is known as like the king of children literacy and then in court it's revealed that he's illiterate like that <laughs> stuff is just funny Oh to yeah me. it's great I love all that <laughs> Is being illiterate such a crime <laughs> for real and then, like, uh, yeah. I try, and, and the thing is, even with a lot of these, like, Simpsons Roast, they got an open fire. I love that episode. I think that, but it's not, like, it's not really that funny. Like, at least a lot of, I just find it charming and it sets up everything. Yeah. But a lot of the thing is, 
it's such a fascinating season of television because like thing is uh obviously yeah. since simpsons we've had adult animation has pushed a lot of boundaries like like now there's shit like south park and family guy which are like partially known for being offensive towards people and like it's weird because at the yeah. time the simpsons had that similar reputation that it was like this countercultural show but like most of it is just yeah. like bart's like kind of rude to his parents and kid he doesn't yeah mind bart really. gets yeah bart gets sent to france after like putting a cherry bomb in the toilet yeah it's like i, I do i do want to yeah yeah i do want to mention like the third the third other episode I really like in this season called Bart the General. Uh, oh, yeah, that was one of... It's an I odd one. one. Yeah, it's an odd one to really like since most of it is just really simple. But I just find it amusing that Bart's finally... Uh, that Bart is actually looking to deal with Nelson. And his main method of doing so is... To, is to train is to train all of Springfield's children and to take him in down war style, yeah. and it's ba and I feel like that this episode is basically how Nelson basically just went from a stereotypical bully character to hey Bart, hey, Bart your, your epidermis, epidermis is showing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I like that one because I just find that like charming. It's such a low stakes situation, like the kids' imaginations mm -hmm. and stuff make it seem like way bigger than it actually is it's also weird because i don't think nelson is ever treated as that big of a threat ever again he basically just becomes punch yeah. like joke yeah. material after that but yeah guess who likes you <laughs> nobody likes so <laughs> how yeah <laughs> but, for real yeah but um yeah, I, with with the rest of uh, Simpsons season one episodes, I actually do want to go over the rest of the episodes a bit. Uh, yeah, sure. So that way, yeah. you know, we can actually talk about you know why I don't think this season is like the best thing in the world. I think, aside from the ones that I like the most memorable, the most memorable of the bunch is the Crepes of Wrath. Uh, yeah, the Crepes of Wrath is kind of weird, like at least in the grand scope of the season, because most of it is yeah, trying to sure. be like. Because, like, at the time, the show was trying to be, like, uh, more grounded, kind of. Like, as, like, yeah. Matt Groening... Yeah. Uh, so, for a bit of backstory, Matt Groening's whole, like... The reason he made The Simpsons the way it was after he couldn't... Uh, he was too scared of his uh, comic, Life in Hell, uh, getting mistreated if it became a series. So he quickly uh, doodled up uh, uh, The Simpsons... Uh, just quick uh, drawings of... Uh, five family members i believe yeah. uh named yeah. off of his actual family and he made that into the simpsons but uh, after that initial idea he morphed it into uh what he called the realistic american family because uh he famously hated uh 50 sitcoms that he grew up with because he didn't think they were like accurate portrayals <laughs> of american life and uh that's what he wanted the simpsons to be and lo and behold after a while Dang. it's not that it's really exaggerated cartoony ship, even by like season three. Yeah. But it's interesting perspective, yeah. at least like at this point what the Yeah, and at the and I do actually think that some of the later seasons do actually manage to, you know, squeeze in some neat commentary. Yeah. But like Crepes of Wrath is interesting because it's such like a it's a really funny setup for an episode. But I feel like most of it just isn't very fun. Yeah, I don't like know. Bart. Yeah, like, yeah, like Bart flushes down a cherry bomb in the toilets, taking out Skinner's mom, and then he gets sent to France over it. <laughs> yeah. All the while he, all the while an albino kid stays with the Simpsons, but is actually a spy trying to get um. Trying to, you know, trying get, to, you know, get information, get information for his country. For his it, country. It, and, and even after that, Homer still yeah, it's so him. weird. I'll send those civil defense plans to you. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird because compared to everything else in season one, that's like, like, for something that's trying to be way more grounded, it's like the most out there concept. And like, I don't know, like, yeah. I kind of like it. Uh, it's weird how Bar they make it into yeah, a joke because so weird how Bart just learns French randomly they don't ever kind of explain that yeah. but i don't know at least he didn't learn british that is true he could have learned british yeah but, but yeah aside from that 
like most of the episode is just Bart getting treated very very poorly and then it just gets resolved with him suddenly learning yeah, French. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I think part of it is because yeah. a lot of season one, the characters' personalities aren't like entirely defined yet. Uh, mainly Homer, like he's kind of the stupid oh, one. Yeah. They like give him stupid moments. But like the big example everyone yeah. points to is in There's No Disgrace Like Home when he sells the TV. Like, home, Homer wouldn't do that. He's not going to he's not gonna yeah. give him television. It's like they wrote a Marge story, but gave it to Homer. It, it, it's really odd how that yeah. turned out. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, I'll get more to Homer and Marge when I talk about, when we talk about the big three, uh, which I want to get to almost, later. Yeah. But um, for now, uh, the episode that I do want to... The next episode I do want to talk about is The Telltale Head, which is actually the episode I'm nostalgic for the Ooh, most, okay. even if I don't think it's, you know, a particularly great episode. Uh, yeah. 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 It, it's like yeah, it's like a little spin on The Telltale Heart, where Bart cuts off the head of Jebediah Simpson, and even though nobody really knows that it's him, even though I don't know why, I mean, the statue is very public. You know, the guilt kind of overtakes him to the point where he actually confesses yeah. it. See, I like that one uh, character-wise, because even, like, early on, they don't make Bart this, like, one-dimensional kid who just tries to cause chaos for stuff. Like, no, he has, like, actual remorse, yeah. and he only ends up doing it to sort of fit in, which which is still weird. But, like, I, I think it works. Yeah, based on it. Yeah, yeah, based on advice that Homer gave yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. It's a neat episode. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, uh, I guess next up, we're going a little backwards a bit. Uh, the Call of the uh, Simpsons, which is basically uh, they get a crappy RV, and then they lose it in the woods, and then Bart and Homer just suck living in the woods, and uh, Homer's Bigfoot now, I guess. Yay. Yeah, this one's kind of directionless, and not like a f I kind of like... like the, it's weird, yeah. the C plot, of all things, with Maggie and the bears yeah. and stuff, I kind of like that. Yeah, I it's, like her little cult yeah, of no. cocaine bears. More of that, <laughs> Yeah, please. it's cute, but, like, I don't know. Most of it is just kind of... It just was kind of aimless. Homer and Bart don't know what they're doing, but then they contrast, contrast that with Marge and Lisa doing kind of well, and, like, I don't know, that's, that's fine, I guess. But then they just do the turn into the Bigfoot thing, and I'm like, okay, this wasn't yeah. set up. It, it feels like a classic, like... A wacky Simpsons concept they just threw into like a season one episode. It doesn't doesn't yeah. fit entirely yeah. for me personally. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it, it's like they took the plot of like a season two Sonic Boom episode and made it one of the B it's plots. <laughs> yeah. Uh but so yeah, uh, not very good episode. Uh, the next one is an, is one that I think is just kind of fine. Uh, Moaning oh, Lisa. Uh, I disagree. I I really like this one actually. At least at least the Lisa stuff. Yeah. Uh the Homer stuff is fun. It just does it it kinda contrasts a little bit. Like, I don't know, you have this plot that's like literally about Lisa being depressed and then you have the Homer B plot which is about yeah. him playing video games. I like I think it's Yeah, he's trying to get the ri yeah, he's trying to get some Riz from Punch Out. Yeah. That's basically what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I like the Lisa stuff, like, a lot, actually, how she's, like, she can, like, barely, like, I, oh, yeah, go on. Yeah, I do, yeah, I actually do kind of like some of the, some of the Lisa episodes where she's, like, you know, just bonding yeah. over someone that actually sees her, e even though, you know, Lisa goes gaga, but we don't really no, talk about that one. That, but... Yeah, we're ignoring that, but yeah. I know that they later did it with like uh, I think the Michael Jackson one, which is also known uh, to be one of the that, best. That Simpsons becomes episodes. more of a Bart and Lisa episode, but uh, yeah, they kind of they kind of yeah. bring they bring Lisa. That's into that one, one that I definitely great. remember more. That was but, great. But, you know, you know, I also think that you know Lisa's taste for jazz is also you know something that's not really explored that much. Yeah, Simpsons, um, so it's nice for that episode. They only uh. They only do that a couple times because uh, Bleeding Gums Murphy comes back in a uh, season six. O only to die though, which is kind of morbid, but they get a good episode out of that. Oh, and then Lisa Substitute yeah. famously uh, delves into that kind of, uh, and that one's uh, one of the best of the series, obviously. 
so they get a lot of, out of it there. But yeah, no, it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Keep okay. going. Yeah, but I I I just find it like a nice one. We get to see like her bond with bleeding goes a bit, and then like I don't know the main stuff I like. I'm really into is the end with Marge, how she, like, like, it's kind of fucked up how they show that she's, like, always been pressured into being happy about stuff. And the end conclusion isn't that, like, Lisa's automatically happy about everything. The conclusion is that, like, if she's sad, she's, she shouldn't, like, bottle that up. She can actually, like, let out her emotions and everything. And it's not, like, it's not amazing, yeah. but it's better than it just being, oh, she's not depressed now. Sure, we can, like, automatically. It, it's a good conclusion. I don't think many shows come to that conclusion, so I, I think it's neat yeah. personally. But yeah, for sure. So um, yeah. Uh, next episode, uh, there's no disgrace like home. Ooh, uh, people mainly remember this one for like obviously the famous uh, shock therapy scene, and that's like yeah. I like that bit, but yeah, I don't like I said overall. Just the rest like, of the episode weird. is just fun. Yeah. I mean, at least compared to the big three, which we'll get to, I think it does a fine job of differentiating itself to the point where I'm not, you know, annoyed with the characters. Yeah. But yeah, I don't even have much to say no, there. It's just I don't think I do either. It just, it's kind of carried yeah. by that moment at the end that feels like one of those, uh, like close to classic uh, Simpsons moments. But and also, I I think. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I think another episode that uh, I think is even less memorable than There's No Disgrace Like Home is definitely Homer's Odyssey. Oh, yeah. Uh, Homer's Odyssey is just a weird one. Like, they barely... It's so yeah. weird tonally. Like, the beginning has Homer, like, devolve into depression, and eventually he, like, is going to kill himself, which is a weird turn. It's also, like, contrasted because he gets, like, fired a couple of times later. And it's never treated yeah. this seriously again. But then, I don't know. Yeah. And then there's the term. Well, yeah, the, the most... Yeah. 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 The most standout thing of the episode for me is that Homer becomes a safety advocate after almost getting hit on the, inter on the intersection, which is like... Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. And yeah, I think that should like say something where that's like the only part of the episode where I felt like a very strong emotion. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, Bart the Genius, I guess. Uh, Bart the Genius is weird to me because I think I like it whenever it's not actually about the genius stuff. Like I mainly just like. The, the Homer and Bart bonding scenes are sweet. Like, when they're playing yeah. baseball yeah. and when they're at the opera. I like those scenes. But I don't know. The actual jokes yeah. when they're at the genius stuff is weird. Also, I like the the animation of Bart's, like, uh, fantasy sequence when he's doing the, the aptitude mm -hmm. test. Uh, but I don't know. That's, like, it's only a couple yeah. moments. Yeah. Think. that. Oh, yeah. That's a good sequence. It also has the red hands. Ooh. Oh, and it also has a Koichi yeah. bow. Uh, can't forget that. Yeah. Uh oh. Quizzy bow on the loose. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the main reason why the episode leaves a not good taste in my mouth is because of the ending. Oh yeah. We're like kind of. Yeah. yeah we're basically just undoes a lot of a lot of Bart and Homer's bonding, yeah. even if it does make sort of sense. Yeah. See, that's like that scene specifically. It kind of like. This, so like, as I was talking about earlier, the initial uh, concept of the series, how it was supposed to uh, subvert uh, classic, like, sitcom tropes, that's, like, the main yeah. moment I point to, because they're, like, blatantly very going, oh, you think it's going to be this nice, happy ending, but then, oh, no, Homer wants to strangle his son. It feels like, I don't know, I think yeah. this season kind of does the subversion stuff sort of well in, like, areas, but, like... I don't know. I don't like stuff like that. It feels too, like, yeah. trying to... Yeah, I feel like that's a case where uh, they definitely... Where they bend... Rea where usual sitcoms bend reality a bit because at the end of the day, it's just much more beneficial for the actual character writing Yeah, like, it's, it's a more... It's ultimately going to be a more satisfying story even if it doesn't make the most sense. Like, 
you can end it like that, but like, oh, is this your resolution? Uh, a, a father's gonna chase down his son about to strangle him. Like, okay, that's what we're doing. Yeah, it's not the best. And yeah, not a very good episode. And now we have the big three. And the big three are basically the main reason why I'm not a big fan of this season. No, sir. Life on the Fast Lane, Homer's Night Out, and Some Enchanted okay. Evening. I think out of these three, three... I don't know if you agree. Homer's Night Out is yeah. definitely the worst out of these three if we're going by Yeah, I, Yeah, for sure. But I like do want to be honest. Uh, yeah. A whole one hour of a season is dedicated to Homer and Marge's marriage yeah, problems. Okay. See, it's weird, because the thing is, I'm going to be honest, as much as I love classic Simpsons, there's only, like, a couple times I think they get this uh, really, like, well done. Uh, the only amazing one is uh, in season five, uh, The Last Temptation of Homer, mainly just because that's a really funny episode and they play with it in a interesting way. Yeah. And uh, Cole and the Homer in se season three... Uh, that one just uh, sweet. I like that one. But thing is, I kind of yeah. like Life on the Fast Lane, but like, it just get this season. It gets like, yeah. gets to a point where like, first of all, I don't think these are plots you should be doing in the first season because by this point, you don't know what Homer and Marge's yeah. dynamic yeah. is. You're not like gonna get all too wrapped up yeah. in it because like, you don't know who these people are. And yet. It, yeah, and in this season especially, it just makes them look really unpleasant characters yeah, right. like i do think fast on, life on the fast lane is you know pretty creepy but at the very it does get creepy but at the very least it does have a good resolution yeah. so that way i can excuse that and it also has a, i think it also has a fine setup yeah. where homer buys where homer buys this bowling ball for himself even though he, even though he for pretends like it's for like marge's birthday, birthday. So, what so what does marge do instead of just you know constantly being mad and kicking homer, homer out she goes, she goes you bought, you bought this bowling, bowling ball for my birthday so i am going to use this bowling ball thank you very, thank you very much yeah. see that's the only one where i, think I feel she like acts like reasonably and homer's night out she is like awful yeah. genuinely like Yes. Oh like, I think Enchanted, uh, I think, I do think that some Enchanted Evening is not the worst episode. Like, I do, when they do get to the babysitter stuff, I do think it's like, you know, is fine. It's alright, I just think, out of the three, it's not the worst, but it's the worst paced. Because, like, the thing is, they spend that entire yeah. beginning on that Homer and Marge, like, relationship stuff. Which, for one is really weird because like i said this was gonna be the pilot to the series and like looking at some enchanted evening as a season finale it's weird as a season as a show premiere it's even worse it's like how, how why were you gonna open with that how does this establish character at all yeah, yeah th thank god they opened up with with like roasting yeah, when they open it's fire. so weird how that one wasn't gonna be the pilot because i really can't think of any like i don't think of any other episode in the season would have fit yeah. that role nearly as well yeah. but yeah i do think that homer's night out is the worst episode of uh, the season definitely. By it's far. the i can like thing is even in the weaker ones of the season i can kind of enjoy like the charm of it like the animation's really rough and they like and I they haven't figured stuff out yet, so I can kind of like enjoy it on some level. But like Homer's Night Out, I'm like, no, I, I can't with that. It's yeah. too much. Like this, the whole setup is the stupidest thing ever. Like it's okay, yeah. the spy camera stuff. But when they get to like Homer getting kicked out of the house because he was dancing beside someone, it's like, stop. I yeah, hate that. Stop. Yeah, please stop. Especially since he was, you know, pressured in by his co-workers. Yeah. It's so, and it's so stupid how, like, for some reason, everyone, everyone in town thinks this is the coolest picture ever. Like, they need mm. to have this. It's like, it's so stupid how this is, like, a phenomenon yeah. around town. And then, like, 
this like Homer like makes it up by giving this stupid speech at like a club. I don't know. The whole thing's just kind of yeah. nonsense. By yeah. the head, I'm really not into it at all. No. Yeah, it, yeah. Where it's like, okay, Ma- Homer Marge wants Homer to te- to teach Bart. Like you shouldn't see these women as ob- you shouldn't see women as objects at all. But throughout most of the episode, you know, I just don't think that the message of I don't think that the really message of the episode is conveyed that well at all. They don't communicate that really. No, it kind of feels like the moral slapped upon. Because honestly, if you were not told that's what the point was, you wouldn't get that until Marge is like. Uh, Homer, you're being a bad influence on your kid. Like you wouldn't get that until it's yeah. told to you. It's yeah. it's yeah. terrible. Yeah, literally. Yeah, until then, you're basically until then the the message is basically just you know, don't do something that you know, don't do something that your wife could view as you cheating on her. Which you know, um, uh, it's not conveyed super well, but if, it would have worked a lot better. The way it's shown, Marge is like, she's seen as stretching so much, which like maybe, maybe in 1990, this was a bigger deal than it was. I don't know if that's the season being dated or if it's just things being weird. But like, I don't know. The way it's shown is just that Marge is stretching too much. And like, it just makes her really unlikable, which is ironic. You're supposed to hate Homer, but you end up hating Marge. And like, so it's like the whole thing's kind of, it's kind of, it's really stupid. I'm not... It, this is, it, it's definitely the worst of the season i'll say that much nothing else comes to that but yeah i don't know yeah very, very bad one yeah so yeah a rough batch of episodes for season one and i'm not entirely sold on the technical stuff of season one either Ooh, even yeah. though i do love how dated it is like i do have some fondness for the dated animation but i much prefer homer's po- post season one voice yeah yeah i don't know okay it's apparently so dan castellanetta was trying to do like an impression of a. Uh... Walter Maffa, I think it was like, like some some guy from the time. They were like, that's what he was trying to go for. But then eventually, that uh, eventually just of uh, like changes it, it, like morphs season two onward. And honestly, it's more pleasant on the ears. Homer's usual voice, I just like that more. And like yeah. then, yeah. like even animation wise, like honestly, I was like revisiting this like recently. Uh, with uh with my good friend uh Xander, a uh, friend of mine. And like when we were going through, uh both of yeah. us we watched the season together. Uh I had known I always just was like in my head, I was like, Oh yeah, uh season one has a lot of animation errors, that's just how it works. But no, there's like a lot, a lot. You like look, like the sum in like the pilot famously there's like a painting back in the background that's like upside down. There's like stuff that's colored wrong uh the famous example is a uh, black smithers uh yeah. you ra- you race swapped uh, smithers smh disney <sighs> classic disney but yeah i don't know yeah classic another, another example i know i don't know if you picked up on this but a lot of shots are like the backgrounds are just empty and it's like weirdly like shaded colors like they'll put emphasis on it in some mm. parts i don't know it's weird Part of the reason early Simpsons uh, isn't animated as well is because uh, I believe for uh, seasons one to season three, they were animated by uh, Klasky Shupo, uh, who who's known for like uh, Rugrats, uh, as told by Ginger, a lot of like early uh, Nickelodeon yeah. stuff. And I think yeah. when season... Yeah, I'll... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be honest, uh, Klasky Kuspo... Kuspo shows are not really something I really want to watch. Through. Yeah, no, I don't think they're uh, a lot of their shows. I just don't like their art styles. It's not like appealing. Yeah, yeah, straight up, especially as oh, Soul definitely, Ginger, like just, that no. show might be good, but I do not like looking at it. No, no, and like yeah, I think why are their lips like that? Yeah, and the eyes too. It's so <sighs> looks so weird, and then like yeah, I don't know. They uh. By the time you get to, like, I think season three mainly. Season two is, like, animation issues, too. But they, like, eventually find out the characters. But uh, 
season four is when I believe they switched to a film Roman who they work with to this day. And uh, that's when the show yeah. becomes way more refined uh, animation wise. Me personally, I like the look of uh, seasons like six, seven, and eight the most. That's when it's like on model the most. And I like the, the specific colors and designs the most. Like if we're talking like how it looks. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Uh, season one. And, and yeah. then, but yeah, and then by season nine, everyone just kind of starts dodging the show. Yeah, we so. don't need to worry about post that. But yeah. But I need to watch the episode with Sneed's feet. Okay, well, we do need, you do need to watch that one. Uh, that is a classic episode. Uh, Sneed's feet and Sneed yeah. for early Chucks. For early Chucks. Classic. <laughs> but, classic. Yeah. And, like, I don't know. Just, like, like I've said, like, a lot, the season's, like, definitely a very interesting, like, kind of time capsule, but... There's only, like, the handful that I'd say would even go toe-to-toe. Because, like, right when, even, like, right as season two starts, you get, like, a bunch of classic episodes. So it's, like, I definitely, like, I respect this season a lot. Because, frankly, uh, I, I think I've said, but The Simpsons means a lot to me. It, like, inspired my interest in, like, adult animation. And without it, we wouldn't have animation the way it is today. Without Simpsons, there's yeah. no Family Guy. There's no South Park, uh, not even a moral oral. So, like, all the best, like, adult animation and animation in general just isn't the same without The Simpsons. And I guess that's what season yeah. one symbolizes, because it's, like, this little thing that became this, like, yeah. pop culture phenomenon, this, basically. But, yeah, this little pebble that started it all. Yeah. I, I will admit, when it comes to, like, adult shows, I have, like, far more nostalgia for Family uh, Guy, oddly I enough. think I would... Sweet, I would agree, because I haven't seen as many individual episodes of Family Guy as I have Simpsons, but, like, as a kid, I definitely watched a lot of a lot of Family Guy clips, yeah. so I was, like, I was initially yeah. familiar yeah. with this it's, one. Yeah. yeah, it's actually the opposite for me, where uh, I actually grew up with Family Guy Season 12 oh. because of, oh, you my. know, my dad's household. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I grew up with the season where Brian Griffin well, dies. Well, you grew up with the Herpy episode <laughs> classic, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I grew up with Peter getting beaten by a can of whoopass. <laughs> but yeah, like e even then, I feel like out of you know all the big adult animated shows out there, I feel like Simpsons is the one I like going to the most, mainly because you know even after watching stuff like South Park. The South Park movie, classic just Simpsons. classic Simpsons, is just so funny, so funny quoting the yeah, show the is, on a regular basis. Like I'd basis. say, um, I've seen, like, out of the three, I've seen South Park the most. If I had to compare, uh, South Park is definitely the more consistent show. It's had its mediocre or one awful season, but it never, like, reaches, like, constant mediocrity or, like, terrible, like I assume modern Simpsons gets. But uh, I will yeah. take Simpsons like season three to eight over most of South Park uh, any day. Like the best of the best is genuinely some of my like favorite TV ever made. That's a high bar, but it does get there yeah. after this point. You just kind of got it. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And then Family Guy is just I own all. I own the first three seasons on DVD. Mm -hmm. So uh, would I also own the Simpsons season one on DVD? It uh currently no because not only do i have tons of shelf space but also simpsons season one is just personally not something i get tons of enjoyment from even though i do appreciate it a lot and i get that it's uh it's funny you uh say that actually because i am right now holding my uh, dvd for uh simpsons uh season one uh funny thing this thing was made during like season 13 and now we're on like season 34 so jesus christ oh, but uh the thing is i God would help us i would recommend these because uh if not not for this season uh plug for any simpsons fans out there uh buy simpsons dvds because these things are like packed with a ton of extras the commentary tracks uh they're like really relaxing and you get to like learn a lot about specific episodes or maybe not for this season because like it's not the most interesting season to learn about 
Uh, but yeah, I would yeah. definitely. Uh, apparently, there's more extras on this because like there's less episodes. But uh, yeah, I, that's Ooh. where I uh, stand on it. Uh, I was gonna watch the more commentary track to like get some more insight on the season before we did this, but uh, I kind of forgot about that, and I think I've like already got a good a good sense of what my thoughts on it are. So I think we're very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I guess we can both agree uh, Simpsons Season 1 is just kind of fine, yeah. but also a very big yeah. quarterstone in animation. Yeah. We would not have uh, the majority of the shows I watch today without uh, The Simpsons. And I think that is something to be, definitely to be respected. So even though this season's just kind of alright, I will always like respect it. And I kind of enjoy it for that, even though it's a little lesser. Mm. So I think we're at an agreement. So, so uh, yeah. yeah. So to continue our shriek of respect, but also uh, upping our positivity game a bit, both Brian and I rewatched our personal favorite Pixar mm. movies, or I believe this is Brian's uh, personal this is favorite Pixar movie, right? Yeah, this is like probably my favorite film to actually, if we're thinking that's a high bar. Uh, it's man. It's mainly nostalgia based. I've seen this movie like dozens yeah. of times, yeah. probably. But uh, yeah, this is uh, yeah. Monsters Inc. But yeah, our yeah. yep, our personal favorite Pixar film is Monsters Inc. Yeah. I don't thing is I don't know how common of a take that is. Most people, most people have seen either Go Incredibles or uh, Ratatouille at least when like I ask around, and uh, that's that's yeah. definitely fair. Yeah, and even then, Those I are great picks, yeah. but. Yeah, and I have also seen like a lot more Wallys in Toy Story 2s, oh, yeah. which are also oh, those are fantastic great picks. As well. uh, honestly, I think you could make an argument for like any Pixar film in the Golden Age, aside from like A Bug's Life or something being your favorite, and I could like I could understand yeah. that. Yeah, but yeah, I can, yeah I can also de- definitely buy that with Cars, even though it's you know not the best movie. It's because it's. It, it, I would say it's probably the most relaxed. Yeah, now Cars Pixar has movies. a very like distinct vibe to it that I like, even though that's another like big nostalgia like based pick. But it is definitely another yeah. one I like. But the Monsters Inc. Uh, I think this is like one of the reasons I've like always liked this movie is because like out of any of Pixar's lineup, it's uh. Well, one, it's the most funny. We can get into that later, but it's like... Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Like, I've yeah. I've literally seen this, like I've said, I've seen this dozens of times, and I still, like, chuckle at lines of this. That's, like, a testament, <laughs> testament to how funny this is. But, like, the main... See, Mikey? <laughs> Ted's walking to work. <laughs> Big deal. Guy <laughs> takes five steps, and he's there. But, <laughs> but yeah, uh... And the main thing I was, even as a young age, I always just loved the world of this movie. Like, every, like, yeah. it makes it, it's kind of rewarding to revisit, actually, because I can, like, you look at, like, the corner of any scene, and there's, like, kind of detail, there's, like, a monster-like detail to everything. Even in, like, some of the opening scenes, you, like, look around, oh, uh, you see Mike's, uh, the TV remote, and it's, like, slightly monster-themed. Even, like, the lamp everything is given a sort of detail to it to make it fit in more yeah. and like yeah oh, yeah uh-huh. yeah one thing one detail that i actually noticed on my rewatch mm-hmm. is like the newspaper that the you know the yeah. fire guy was holding yeah. the fire monster yeah. and on the front page it was talking about how there may be more blackouts in the city which is actually touched upon more in the story oh, oh that's, that's a good detail see and like the thing is that's part of why this movie is, like, so cool to me. It's, like, inspired, like... It's one of the movies that's made me, like, I think, appreciate animation the most. Because, like, it's even, like... For one, it's just background details. There's so much effort put into every frame of this. But also, like, yeah. character design, too. Like, you look around, and there are yes. so many just one-off characters I'm gonna remember forever because of their designs. Like, you mentioned the fire monster guy... Uh, the yeah. Italian yeah. guy at the at the food stand, I'm gonna always remember him. Yeah. Uh, even Ted, yeah. we quoted earlier, uh, that guy. Yeah. He's literally just a giant scaly leg, and he's better designed than every character in the Elemental. Exactly. Like, see, compare something like, <laughs> compare like the design of like Roz to like the water guy in Elemental. Like, it's no contest. 
It's, the, it's pathetic. Don't, don't let it happen again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's like one of the main things. I've just always loved the the designs of everything, the world. And even like ignoring stuff yeah. like that. Uh, it's like the pacing of everything is like perfect, I would say. Because you get like that, you yes. open with uh, the quick gag, obviously, that the guy... The guy's doing the test scare, and then he uh, trips and falls, and then he uh, then he runs around, and then and then uh, they do that, but then that like uh, naturally is able to cut to water just coming in, and it's like partial exposition, but it's like naturally done. He's telling other people like about this stuff. It's not gonna feel yeah. like it's yeah. It has like some of the most natural exposition yeah. I've seen in a script yeah. like ever. Exactly. It's not like you're not. They're not dumping info onto the audience. You're naturally learning all this stuff, and it's great. And then yeah. even like after yeah. that, you uh, get um, get the scene of uh, Mike waking up Sully on their morning routine, which like that's like you don't you don't need to like have them explain how they know each other or anything. And, and right away you get it, like you understand yeah. how their yeah. dynamic is, and it, every it, and then like that's all the opening, the first bit. It just Oh, I, I just oh. remembered another oh, yeah. detail of the movie that I really uh-huh. love. Yeah. Okay, so near the end, uh-huh. in the ending, when they're all, you know, you know, doing the laugh thing now, uh, the monster at the beginning of the movie did the same uh, fall on the, yeah, fall on the Jack trick, fall on the Jack's trick that he did in the Oh, opening. yeah, I, I remember that. They're like... That's a good way of tying everything full circle. That's neat. But, like, yeah, it's, I don't know, like, and, like, to get back to the opening, like, yeah, like, you get, you establish all their dynamics, like, very clearly. And then, like, right after that, you, like, you get the first, like, scenes of uh, Waterdeuce and how they explain, like, all the accidents and everything happening. I'm, like, the thing is, they get good comedy out of that. Like, the kid who's touched by, like, yeah. the implied uh, edgy, like, uh, six-year-old and then like they shred the door and then the famous scene of uh george uh getting a uh, shaved and uh, they pull the band 2319 we got a 2319 oh, <laughs> but then like they do all that and like it's funny but like it naturally like explains stuff to the audience without like talking down to them or just not just dumping a bunch of stuff and it's really yeah. like yeah. i feel oh well, yeah yeah, I feel like when it comes to, like, actually the world building in general, I feel like, you know, maybe you could apply it to the same standards as Elemental, which, oh, why is this world built, why is this world, you know, sometimes built in a way that's, like, you know, actually a hindrance to some monsters, but here's the thing. First off, in Monsters, Inc. is actually funny. That's true. So there. It's one of the funniest things yeah. ever, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, second thing... Uh, you know, you just have the, you know, the great, you have, like, the great scene where the slime monster falls in, but also it's, like, shown that there there's more than, ju- you know, not one monster is the same species. Yeah, yeah. It's, con- it's consistently unique. Whereas in Elemental, there's, like, four different frac, there's, like, four different factions, and literally all the water people just die by spawn. Yeah, it, it doesn't, like... And also, I just think, like, Monsters, Inc. is an inherently more, like, interesting world, concept-wise. Like, Elemental's like, oh, uh, elements exist. Sure. What are we What, what yeah. are we going to use that for? It's just, oh, a yeah, it's just standard thing. society. Yeah. But, oh, the fire people can burn yeah. stuff. The water people can, like, go through stuff. Why do they even have fences? Yeah. But, like, Monsters, Inc., in comparison, uses its concept, like, so interestingly. Because they're like, oh... Uh, what if there was a world of uh, monsters like inside our inside our doors there? They're like, okay, uh, there's that, yeah. but how will we Which is... how will we expand that? It's like, oh, they have this whole uh, factory system for how they do everything, and oh, because that's why they use scream as power in their world. And like, the point is, it's just way more creative, which we'll get to stuff like the climax is like really insane. yeah, especially since like the whole closet. Yeah, especially since like the whole door thing is you know based on mon, is based on kids being afraid of their closets for yeah, monsters. Yeah, it's like it's inherently just taking a base concept and they like build on that and they like it just need 
like how everything, uh, how everything like builds and keeps going throughout. Cause like, I don't know, I could see an alternate version of this movie where it's like, oh, like they like set up the monster thing, but then they don't like do that that much with it. But yeah. no, like every like frame of this is either uh, giving you a joke based on like a monster thing or like expanding the world or just expanding like the characters and their dynamics, which are, which are great. Like as we'll touch on Mike. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you'd agree. I think Mike and Sully have the best dynamic out of any uh, Pixar like protagonists. I do agree, oh, actually. Yeah, nice, nice. Cause, well, there's like the setup at the beginning that's like they like set it up well, and then on top of that, it just it's just really funny. Like they have like the perfect chemistry of each other. Like you can tell that they are like yeah. they've been like friends for really a long time with like the yeah. way they like yeah for sure. Rip on I each mean, other. it's great. Yeah, I mean, if you really think about it, most of the film wouldn't have even happened if Mike didn't forget his paperwork. Oh, that is, that's true. Should have filed his paperwork last night. Uh, but... Wazowski, you forgot to file your paperwork last night. Oh, that's all paperwork. <laughs> wouldn't it be easier if it all just blew away? Don't, <laughs> Don't feed me lines from Monsters, Inc. It hurts. <laughs> For you... But yeah, uh, one of the, one of the most, like, uh, and then, like, even on top of being funny, just the emotional core of it with Sully and Boo is, uh, great, and the thing I love about that most is, like, it causes, eventually causes the third act breakup with, uh, Mike and Sully and everything, but it's done naturally, because, like, thing is, uh, they specifically show that even though it obviously Sully's the one who found it first, but like they show Mike misses out on like every time they can like potentially grow a bond. Like Sully's alone with her when uh they're in uh, the bedroom and he's explaining how Randall's the monster, which immediately Sully's more attached to her then. But then uh they specifically show Sully's the one who gets all the emotional like when when he thinks she's squashed up into the into the cube and all that yeah. stuff, like I'm, yeah, I'm like I'm like trying to find it, but I I know that there was like a uh, one image that was made. Uh, we're we're yeah we're like you know. Oh, uh, I I found okay, it. Where it? it's like the cube scene where Sully's crying over the cube, and it's captioned my with dad. "My dad when he finds out I replaced the memory of our deceased grandmother with Angry Birds Roll 34 on his hard drive." <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, to get back to like that one will always get me. I I'm saving this right now. Yeah, get, get on the, but yeah, I got to get my Angry Birds yeah. Riz. But then I, and they like they show that, so it obviously will create conflict between him and Mike later. But it they, it all feels like none of it is like unreasonable for both characters. Cause Sully has that extra context of what their, like, relationship means. But, like, Mike, he's been, like, an observer to this entire thing. So to him, it just looks like Sully's taking this random, like, random child too seriously right when they're, like, about to hit the peak of their lives and they're stuck with this child they have to take care of and get into this whole situation with. Yeah. It's, like, it's probably the best example of a third act breakup I think I've seen in a movie. Oh, yes. 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 I love it so much. We? Yeah. There's no we this this time, pal. You're on your own. Exactly. Yeah. I I love that third act. Also, um, my... The Abominable Snowman is one of my favorite John Ratzenberger characters. They just bring him in for a bunch of gags. It's great. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Mike continuously dead names Boo. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know, but I found that really funny thinking about it. That kid is a killing machine. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, on the on the topic of the third act, uh, I keep saying this has like the best blank, but but I mean it's true. Uh, this is one of the only examples of, like, twist villains I actually, like, really like. Because, like I've said, 
from the yeah. beginning, Watered is is uh is set up, but like he's not like the, they have Randall too, so it's not like you're robbed of an antagonist for most of the movie. And a Randall is great. Yeah, for he's sure. This most like he's this extremely pathetic guy who like is like using like he only cares about this like stupid record as much as they do. But then like then they get into like how he's literally abducting a child for like. And then, then like the tie him into Waterdeuce later, and the thing is with Waterdeuce, it sucks because like it's not like he was like faking ever being nice to to Sully or anything. He clearly yeah. does still care yeah, about exactly. Him, but he's like he's gotten so desperate with how the company's gone that uh, like like he says he'll do anything uh, to make this company uh, company work. Yeah. It's and uh, so good. yeah, and even better uh before his like big reveal when he like finds out the truth of what's been going on, it gives literally everything that he's saying a double yeah, meaning. Yeah, exactly. It's it's like it's great. Like cuz like the problem with most twist villains is that like after the the twist happens, they're practically different people. The infamous examples of this are like a lot of the 2010 stuff like a uh, big hero yeah. 6 yeah. and Hot. frozen yeah and frozen yeah. zootopia yeah. but the thing that's great about yeah. uh water notes he's the same character from beginning to end you like they don't alter his personality in any way he just see that like yeah he's like like he like he just has to go to this desperate means and it it's kind of like depressing the more you think about it cuz like at the end of the day he just wants what's best for his company but he's got him like so desperate and eventually uh, convinced by Randall to just go to like the worst, worst possible extremes, and, and then the way like, and like it all builds up to uh, the climax, which is just one of the best climaxes ever. It's really creative. Yeah, uh, it's funny too. And then like like the visuals of like all the doors going everywhere is great. I love that a lot. And then and then, like they cut, and then like eventually, uh, when like. Waterdeuce is like chasing down Sully and like and then they oh I forgot they tie it back perfectly because the the room from the beginning eventually is his downfall because that's what like reveals him to the CDA mm -hmm. it's great I love all that it comes yeah full circle. yeah and yeah and then on top of that um but before even all of that you have like the genuinely excellent climax yeah, yeah. Where it utilizes the concept of the movie yeah. to its absolute fullest. That's what I mean by the where they're running from Randall's by they're running through Randall by going through all the doors yeah. and into different locations of the human yeah. world. See, this is what I mean by like this movie like perfectly utilizing its concept. It's like the visual of it is so creative, but they get a lot of out of it. Like mileage wise, it's an intense climax, but they're like able to get uh, a bunch of like quick gags out of it. When they fall into France and on the beach and all that, it's it's great. And then, yeah. and yeah. then uh, I like the actual, I love the actual standoff with like, uh, Boo and Randall. She just like fucking beats him, beats yeah. beats the shit out of him. And then they throw him into the door, which is implied he got sent to a Bugs Life land. He gets beat up again. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Look, mom, another gator got another in. Another gator. <laughs> Give me that shovel. <laughs> His yelling sounds are so funny. He's like so... Yeah. yeah. It's great. And then, like, I already talked about what happens with Waters, but the actual end ending, mwah, just perfect. The Absolutely. Last, like, yeah, I think that Monsters, Inc. is just a genuinely masterful I movie agree. and one of 100%. my all-time favorites. Uh, it's, like, my favorite animated film ever made. Specifically, like, Obviously, nostalgia is a part of that. Like I've said, uh, if I could watch, if I brought it out again for this video, I would have watched on like my uh, childhood Blu-ray that I probably have had since like 2011. Mm -hmm. But uh, like even ignoring that, it's like one of the most like well-crafted things Pixar has made when they were yeah. on their like when they were on their A game. Basically, this was right after Toy Story 2, like the start of them being like on yeah. the roll constantly. Such a yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll looking through my uh, favorite movies list, uh, I think that there are animated movies that I do prefer, and I'll list them off. Uh, Whisper of the Heart, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, The Iron Giant, uh, 
Into the Spider-Verse, The Land Before Time, uh, if you really want it, Dark Crystal. Uh, well, technically, but yeah. that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Uh, th and then my two favorites being Tale of Princess Kaguya and yeah. Prince of Egypt. See, those are both those like, are just, very fair picks. Objectively, yeah. I think they're both better. Those this, two, but... yeah, those two are masterpieces on an entirely different yeah. plane of existence. Yeah, that, that's true. Uh, for me, like I said, this is like, those are definitely better than this, but that's like, that's like no cutting this like short. This is like the best of like, probably the best they could have been for what it's like concept is and like how they like executed and everything uh yeah. very high yeah. high recommendation for that yeah it's one of the most creative films i've seen and i also do highly recommend it if i do get the chance i would be interested in adding this to, co to my collection i love this movie I a lot i think i have this in my collection somewhere but i have to like dig around my basement to find my old blu-ray of it but uh yeah very happy I uh, yeah. own this film technically. Uh, Same. Same. So, um, I guess that wraps up our episode. Uh, yeah. uh, Brian, do you have anything you'd like um, to plug in? Not, uh, not much. I, I have a letterbox, I guess. I don't review much or do anything on there. Uh, if you're interested, uh, there's that. I also have a uh, backlogged and serialized for uh, games and uh, TV, respectively. I do a lot of... Uh, episode logs and serialized actually so if that's anything you're interested in uh give that a look and uh, the main content thing i'd like to plug is i have a, a podcast of my own uh campy cast which i run with my uh, friend anthony uh recently we just did a big episode on uh, all eight leprechaun films with uh two guests so uh there's no shortage yeah. of content on that right now there's we have like 20 yeah. episodes at the beginning you were actually uh Liter yeah, and I recommend checking out that podcast too. Literally, everyone that's been on Campy Cast is a very good friend of mine. So, yeah. so uh, I believe that's it for having uh, the plug. Uh, thank you for having me on this. Was a, this was a great time. Uh, yeah, I enjoy having you too, Brian. And until next time, I wish everyone a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye -bye. Peace. Yeah.